I come to preach this morning on I'm sick and tired. I'm sick and tired. Judges chapter 3 and verse 31. If you'd stand with us for the reading of the word of God. The Lord brought us to this passage of scripture. And uh, I'll be honest, I tried to get away. I tried to, I tried to look at several different things in the Lord. And when I pray, he kept directing me back to Shamgar. So I'm going to preach on Shamgar this morning. The Bible says uh, in verse 30, verse 30, uh, so Moab uh, was subdued that day under the hand of Israel, and the land had rested four score years. Verse 31 says, and after him, and this is come about somebody, somebody else come along, after him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, which slew of the Philistines, 600 men with an ox goad. And he also delivered Israel. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the privilege to be in your house and to worship you. And I pray that you'd help us in this place this morning. Minister and move by your grace for your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Sick and tired. Have you ever been sick and tired? I, I don't know. Have you ever been sick and tired to the place that you're sick and tired of being sick and tired? I mean, you're ready to do something about it. Ready to serve notice on the adversary. Ready to make a change. I'm ready to make a change in the, th the way things are going. Did you know that you can get to a place that you just let things roll along, that it becomes customary, and you'll find yourself just running through a routine, and you'll just find yourself continually being overwhelmed by the adversary and subject to what he puts on you. But there will be a time when you will remember, you'll see somebody, you'll see somebody smiling. You'll say, well, that's a fake smile. And then all of a sudden, you remember back when you had joy. You remember back when you had the presence and the power and the touch of God. If you're backslidden away from the Lord, you'll never be able to get away from that heavenly bread that you once tasted of. But there must come a time when you get to the place where you are sick and tired of being run over by the enemy and the adversary. I am tired of hearing about how things used to be. I've heard, I'm, I thank God. I thank God for Brother Herbert Johnson, our founding pastor, pastored here 19 years. And after him was Simon Peter. I should have known better than try to come preach and pastor a church where Simon Peter pastored. Simon Peter pastored for two years. After him was the great Bishop T.D. Johnson, who's now retired and in our midst. T.D. Johnson pastored here 19 years. After him, the church went through a process. I was the fifth pastor in five years. Into this year, we will have finished 25 years. I've never seen such a time in my life. I've never seen such a time in my life. You're not hearing me. I've never seen such a time where the enemy is coming against the church. I also have the distinct privilege as being a presbyter in this uh, North Texas district in the Denton section, served in this capacity for several years. I've never seen a time where the church is being so overrun with the cares of this life, where people are so uncommitted to the things of God, here one day and gone the next, in and out and up and down, all over the place, expect something but don't want to give anything. Oh, help me now. Oh, you're just, you're, you're upset this morning. That's right, I'm upset. I'm upset at the enemy taking away what God has placed here in 2019 to be a bright, shining example and a light. We are the picture of the church. And I'm sick and tired of the enemy taking away what God has placed here as an example to Denton, Texas, to North Texas in this area for such a time as this. I'm tired of seeing the people of God run around with their vessels half filled. I'm tired of seeing the people of God running around on yesterday's manna. 
I'm tired of seeing the people of God running around trying to make it, listening to stories of days gone by. The Bible plainly tells us here that the others had passed away and after them, along come a man by the name of Shamgar. I thank God for what Brother Johnson's did, both of them. I thank God for what our forefathers and those that went before us did. But it's time somebody get it deep down in their soul that I'm going to get a hold of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the same God that worked in days gone by is the God that's going to work for me in 2019. I am desperate for a mighty moving and a delivering of the mighty hand of God. Anybody with me? Well, I got six people. I said, is anybody with me? The church world by and large is going through the motions. The church, lar- the church at large today is going through a program. We've got it all lined out. We know at what time, who's going to come in, who's going to sing, and what's going to take place. And let me out of here by so-and-so time so I can beat the other church to the restaurant. God knows that my sugar might get high if I don't get down there in time to give me something to eat. That preacher was long-winded this morning. It's time we throw the clock out the door. It's time we get rid of all of those things and say there's nothing more important. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care what, what it needs to happen. I must have a delivering of the mighty hand of God. I'm tired of going through the motions. Going through the motions. Sick and tired. The Bible tells us that the man that was named here before us is Shamgar. Shamgar was an instructor of the oxen. But I ain't nobody. Shamgar was a farmer. He was a working man. He was a working man. I ain't never seen anything good fall on a lazy man yet. Give me a working man. Shamgar was a working man. He is working in his field. He was not one of David's mighty men. He was not a cunning archer. He was not one of the politicians. He was not one of the specially anointed of God to be a major prophet. But Shamgar was just an ordinary working man that had heard about Jehovah, that had been privileged enough to live in the land of Israel under the divine providence of God. He was just an ordinary man. Y'all ain't hearing me this morning. Well, if I had this, and if I had that, and if I was their child, and if I was a part of their family, then I could do something. If I did this, and if I hadn't have done that, I'm telling you there's skeletons in your closet that are rattling so loud. You put the duct tape around the door. You've turned the music up because the enemy is haunting you over things of the past, and the enemy's wearing you out. I come to tell you this morning that if you'd get sick and tired of the enemy, and the adversary taking advantage of you you can do something about it this morning just as an ordinary man an ordinary man an ordinary lady they'll say I'm sick and tired of the enemy taking advantage of me the hurts I mean on your ship that you're trying to make it the anchors fell off and is dragging Captain Worry has got on your boat. He's drilled holes faster than you can plug them. You're looking through the waters at others that have drowned in deep sorrows. You're looking down at the skeletons of others that hadn't made it. And the devil's saying you're not going to make it either. You can't do anything. And you're going through sleepless nights. And you're antagonist. And you're upset. And you're worried. I tell you it's time to get sick and tired of the adversary. And you can do something about it this morning. Have you ever been under the spout where the glory of God comes out and had heaven flood your soul? Have you ever spoken other tongues as the Spirit gave the entrance and you left the house of God baptized, full, saturated, filled overflowing? Where's your vessel at right now? Where's your joy at right now? Shamgar, an ordinary man. Bump somebody and tell them I'm just an ordinary feller. 
Ordinary lady, if that's the case. Brother Brandon, my pastor used to always say, I'm mud and you're mud and who's afraid of mud? We was created from the dust of the earth. And when we pass away, this old body returns to the dust. I'm not intimidated by anybody, but I am intimidated by the great God of heaven who's in our midst this morning and who has given us the authority to take back what the enemy has stole from us. And I'm sick and tired of seeing folks run around with their chin dragging the ground and living in yesterday's victories when God has a fresh touch for you today. I love old Shamgar. I'm going to get to shake his hand one day. I'm going to tell you, thank you, Shamgar. I preached on you. You was an example to me. You know what I love about Shamgar? Is he got sick and tired of the enemy taking what was his. See, what you need to know about this text is the Philistines would come in They would come in and take, they would wait until the Israelites had the harvest coming. They'd sit at a distance and watch them while they planted their fields and they wouldn't mess with them. But then all of a sudden the harvest would start to come. The harvest would start to come. The harvest would get just ripe. If you're watching today on Facebook and you're the person stealing our bushes, I'm praying for you. We had two more disappear this week. I'm handling it a lot better than the groundskeeper Bishop T.D. Johnson is. I mean, about the time we get them planted and get things looking good, I mean, they had new fresh green leaves on the bottom. They're gone. They're raptured. Just a hole left in the ground. I'm telling you, are you hearing me this morning? About the time that the people of God would be ready to reap a harvest, when they would be ready to sit down at the table and have a good old Thanksgiving dinner, when they would be ready, they had worked hard, they had prepared, they had prayed God would give the water, they had weeded everything out, they had plowed the field, they was working like they ought to, and all of a sudden the Philistines would come in and take their harvest. And Shamgar said, oh, no, not this time. He did not have a bow and arrow. He did not have a sword. All he had was an ox goad, which was an eight-foot pole. On one end was sharpened like a pencil, and the other end had a a six or eight inch like a shovel that was drove into the end of that piece of wood where he would walk behind holding on to the reins and he would walk behind the plow and he would knock off the dirt or the clay that would stick with that one end and the other sharp end he would prod the oxen to keep moving and it was he was a crafted ox goader he couldn't use a sword He didn't know how to shoot a bow and arrow, but he knew how to work that eight-foot ox goad. And all of a sudden, the adversary shows up and says, we're going to take your bean patch. We're going to take your maters. We're going to take your taters. We're going to take everything you put in this field. But something rose up in Shamgar. And he said, oh no, not today. You may have taken it in time past. But I'm sick and tired of you coming and taking what God has given to me. And he began to swing that ox goad. You ever seen a determined ox goad slinger? Jihitsu or whatever you want to call it. Oh, yeah. He 
He didn't know Kairati. He didn't know. He didn't know a lot of things, but he knew he was sick and tired of the enemy taking what God had given to him and placed within his possession. And he said, you're not taking it today. Woo, this is good preaching. I'm feeling better. He got sick and tired. When are you going to get sick and tired? It's been so long since some of you has raised your hands and tears has run down your face. Now you're about half mad at about half the people on your job and about half the people in church and about all of your family. When are you going to get sick and tired of acting like that? When are you going to get sick and tired of being sick and tired? The joy of the Lord is my strength. You can always tell what's in somebody when you bump them. Because when you bump them, that's what's going to spill out. You better watch where you're going, Jack. I'm fixing to put five of these upside your head. Bump into a Holy Ghost field. Hey, that's all right. Some of that spill out on you. Praise God. Hey. I was talking to, talking to a fellow one time. We just left the Kessler playing basketball. He was sick and tired. He tore into them. I tell you what, that brother out there, I don't care. Next time he preaches, you let me know I ain't showing up. That is the foul in us. He never calls a foul. I mean, he was mad. He went down the whole list when he got through. He said, as a matter of fact, I think only me and you is the only ones that saved. I said, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I said, who was it last week? I said, it was Ricky. Who was it the week before? It was Scott. Who was it the week before? It was Jerry. I said, who was it the week before that? I said, do you think there might be a common denominator? If you got drama with everybody else, you always having to give somebody a piece of your mind. You may be the problem. If you always telling everybody else what they need to be doing all the time, you always got something to give. Something. You might be the one. Hello? Why don't you go back to the altar and take back what the enemy has stolen from you and say, listen, I've come today. Listen, I realize the enemy has slipped in and he's taken away the harvest. He's taken away what God has given to me. Listen to me this morning. I didn't come for any other reason than for somebody to get the victory and to put the enemy to flight. You don't have to leave here without the joy of the Lord bubbling over in your soul. I'm telling you, the enemy is a liar and a defeated foe. Worry has to go. I said worry has to go. If the people of Israel would have ever realized who they were, they wouldn't have been taking all that stuff from the enemy. Y'all ain't hearing me this morning. If they would have ever realized who they were. I'm a child of the king. Say it, I'm a child of the king. Why would I let the enemy steal my victory? Why would I let the enemy steal my victory? Why? Sometimes it's insecurities of ourselves. 
I'm just, I'm just writing, reading to you what the Lord gave me to, and I wrote down. Get over your insecurities. I'm a child of the king. I belong to him. I'm part of the family of God. And somebody told me the other day, everybody, everybody in the church knows. I said, no. Not everybody in the church knows. Because I'm the pastor. And I had no idea till you just told me. And I usually hear things pretty quick. But the devil will tell you, everybody. Come on, Shamgar. Come on. I'm getting tired of getting run over. I'm getting tired of what? He used what was in his hand. He used a plowshare. Eight feet long. Did you know that this was later used in the siege of Troy? What was used by Shamgar was later used as a battle instrument. As he cried out, and they cried out, We will fight with the inhabitants of heaven. I don't have anything. Well, if I had what they had, all you need is a little oil in the house. If you'll give it to the Lord. I don't have anything. Come on, son. Take your five loaves and your two fishes. But I, 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 I just can't do it. Jesus said, go down there and go fishing. And when you catch that fish, open up his mouth. There's going to be a coin in there. And when you get that coin out, go pay your taxes. I'm telling you, the God of heaven. Romans chapter 12 and verse 3 said that every man has been given a measure of faith. You can't overcome. You don't have to be defeated. You don't have to live in the molly grubs. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I refuse the enemy to take my victory another day. Use what's in your hand. Use what God has given you. Last point. Somebody say, praise the Lord, I'm glad he's about through. Because I'm enjoying getting run over by the enemy. He's stirring me up this morning. He slew the Philistines, not the Israelites. You didn't see that coming. That was like going through an intersection and the light turned yellow. He slew the Philistines, not the Israelites. Was the Israelites at fault? Some of them should have got sick and tired of being run over. But he didn't go up to them and say, you stupid ignoramus. How long are you going to sit around here and let them guys come down here and steal our maters? When are you going to do something about it? Why are we being beat up? Israelites never realized who they was. But all of a sudden, Shamgar rose up. And he said, I don't know if they're going to do anything. I'm not asking anybody else to do anything. But as for me, I'm going to die right out here before they take what's rightfully mine. And when you get a determination in your heart that you're going to fight against the enemy and not your brother. Once he started putting, listen, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Write it down in your book right now. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Your problem is not your wife. Your problem is not your husband. Your problem is not your children. Your problem is the devil. Your problem is...
it's not that other brother in the church. Your problem's not that other sister. I'm not looking at anybody. I don't want anybody to say I'm looking at. Your problem is the adversary. We are wrestling against principalities and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. And I've got to understand that I must fight the good fight of faith and fight against the adversary. Not my sister. They're not your problem. The enemy is your problem. And once you realize, it, am I, they offended me. Blessed are they that love thy law and nothing shall offend them. If I'm offended, that is a choice that I allowed to be made. Oh, bless his heart, he didn't know what he was doing. What Jesus say? He said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. While he's on the cross, and they're gambling for his one-piece robe as he's hung naked in shame with blood running down his chest. More than likely, his guts literally hanging out of his stomach as that cat of nine tails was wrapped around his back. Pushing himself up to get a breath. And he's saying, Father, forgive them. His disciples has all fled. They've all run away except John who comes back and standing there with Mary. But he understands. Not my will. Oh, somebody needs to say that. Not my will, but thy will be done. I surrender myself. I surrender everything to you. You are in control. You're going to work it out for your good. I am just your vessel. And he gave up the ghost. Look at this. You're going to like this. Come help me, Pastor Tim. And he delivered his family. He delivered himself one man one man who got sick and tired of the enemy taking the harvest that God had given to him took what meager instrument he had in his hand And begin to swing it and put the enemy to flight and kill 600. There's guys that are being paid double time up in the castle. They're being paid a whole lot more than that and they ain't killed 600 in all their life, much less one day. But here was a man of God who said, I'm tired of the enemy taking what God has given to me. And I've come today to take back my joy. I've come today to take back what God has rightfully given to me. I've come today, and the Bible says, and he delivered Israel. He brought revival to the nation of Israel. One man. One man. Who got sick and tired. I preached last week on are you really free? I'm convinced. 
I'm convinced with all of my heart. And if we got ready, God is more than ready and able and willing. God was ready to deliver Israel all the time. He was waiting on somebody who would get tired of the enemy stealing from them. And you're here in this service this morning and the enemy has taken and taken and taken and stole from you. What you need to do is say, I'm tired. I'm tired of the enemy because you hear me. If you don't get tired of the enemy taking your stuff, in just a few days, he's going to take your life. He's not just satisfied stealing and taking away those things that you have that God has given to you. But he comes to steal, and the next thing is to kill and utterly destroy. That word destroy means to literally tear apart. It's time you got sick and tired. Father, in the name of Jesus, for the glory of God, I pray it's high time that we wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. I pray that you'd help us this morning. Speak to us. Draw us by your grace and your power. In the name of Jesus. I want you to stand with me all over this house. Would you do me a favor this morning? I want you to come and stand as families all over this place, stand in the altars. Come on, come on. Come all the way up to the front, come on. Come on, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming. Come on in. Make room for everybody. Come on. Come on.